Okay, so a few of you guys have sent me this video from The Majority Report. It's a progressive talk show hosted by Sam Cedar, uh, co-hosted by Michael Brooks. And a vegan has called in. Starting to see a bit of a theme here with vegans calling into these shows. I hope that we keep it up, keep the pressure on. So I'm going to go over the video. Let's, uh, let's check it out. Calling from a 201 area code. Who's this? Where are you calling from? Hi, this is Jimmy from Jersey. Jimmy from Jersey. What's on your mind? Hi, thanks for taking my call. Uh, I'm calling <laughs> in to talk about uh, veganism. Uh, I think that it's the uh, most important... Uh, I think that the animal rights movement is the most important movement of the century. Uh, I think it's essential... Uh, to address public health, climate, the climate cli the climate crisis, uh, and the animal cruelty crisis. Uh, I want to take a step back for a second. I do realize that I'm talking to somebody who is on a show that uh, absolutely glorifies meat consumption. Uh, it's called Bob's Burgers. <laughs> Should be right. called Bob's uh, Dead Cows on a Bun. I didn't actually know that um, Cedar does a voice on that show. This has got to be weird for AIU, because doesn't he love that show and hate Sam Cedar? Maybe some cognitive dissonance there. Well, to <laughs> be fair, to, uh... to be fair, last night I had an Impossible Burger for the first time, and that was actually really good. Yeah. I uh, so oh, I don't. I'm awesome. not aware that Bob's Burgers isn't a completely vegan. Uh, burger joint, but I assume it's not. But yes, okay. But and to, uh, in in my defense too, I understand that uh, my character is not in any way affiliated with the restaurant. In fact, it's considered in some respects its nemesis. So. Oh yeah, you're you're actually like the crusader. You yeah, know, it's health true. inspector. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so so that's that's awesome that you uh, tried an impossible burger. You know, and I realize I'm kind of calling you because. Congratulating a person for trying one burger. That that's the reality we're in today. It's sad. You guys have done some great uh, discussion on this compared to uh, other left wing shows, and kind of like you know, I guess I'd like to get you. Have they? If anyone is aware of actual good quality vegan conversations that happened on the Majority Report, please send them to me. I would appreciate that. Thank you. To talk the talk before walking the walk. I, I mean, walk the walk before talking the talk. So, yeah, I mean, after having an Impossible Burger, do you feel like, you know, that you want to uh, make that transition towards a more plant-based diet, you personally? Without a doubt. I mean, my feeling was like, I'm not I'm not ordering a burger here again anymore. My, my son likes to go to this burger place. Basically, I figured it out because there's a TV there. Uh, and um, he, smart. And now I make him sit with his back to the TV and he just like, he'll hug me and then just actually use that as an excuse of watching the TV. But I, I, last night I was like, I'm not ordering a burger here again. I'm only gonna get this. I think the caller was asking about him transitioning to veganism generally, not transitioning to always getting the vegan burger at um, Burger King, but still that's good. Step in the right direction. And that's, and I have to say in terms of my red meat consumption, um, I don't eat that much meat incoming. I've already been made a conscious effort to cut down on that. I mean, I, I may have a steak four times a year now. And, uh, you know, a burger. I, don't I have to say, a lot of people say I don't eat that much meat. But that sounded, for some reason, that hit me as honest, at least this time. Um, so, yeah, if you've actually cut your consumption down a lot, that's obviously reduced your contribution to the animal holocaust significantly and that much is good but i think that we should all together not fund holocausts i think that funding holocausts is bad i think i mean <laughs> you share jewish heritage uh with me and with you know other people on the show i think that people of jewish descent especially should not support gas chambers that seems seems basic but <laughs> you know apparently it's got to be said so yeah, uh, let's let's uh, move in that direction. I don't know. Another half dozen times a year, maybe. But that burger, the burger's done. 
Um, but I, the, yeah, the I mean, tough part for me. Okay, so my read so far is that Sam actually seems receptive to veganism, which is good. He didn't try to deny the connection um, uh, between the issues that were mentioned, like the environment, I think health was mentioned, whatever, and veganism. So he seems like he gets that this is a thing uh, that is good. Uh, he is somewhat moving in that direction. So all of that is actually nice to hear. Um, but you can tell he's not like fully there yet. He's obviously not actually vegan and he's not giving any like so far like reflection on just how serious the ethical problem is. So that suggests to me that there is some level of um, like, I don't want to say ignorance, like he's still got like the blinders on to some degree, but his mind is like pleasantly open. So I think there's definitely, you know, room to persuade him all the way here. Let's see what else it says. He would be more like fish uh, and some chicken, but I, I, you know, progressively I'm eating less and, and, and some pork. Progressively. Pork, I guess, in the context of like sausage occasion. Well, but. we're the last generation that's even going to be able to eat fish, so that won't be a problem for very much longer. Right. The pescatarians, um, that's, there's, they're going to be self correcting. I'm a pescatarian currently. Um, I was vegetarian from the age of 12 to 18 vegan from 18 to I want to say 32 and now I eat eggs and seafood a little bit in my diet um, I will say that what you do on an individual level really doesn't matter that much in terms of the world um, we're going to have to ramp down meat production by a lot if we want to save the planet and this is one thing that I would hope people would vote to do if we ever take democratic control over production um, and that, in that case, yes, people are going to need to be sold on less meat for everyone. But until that happens, yeah. um, your personal lifestyle choices, um, I mean, they're great for you. I don't, like I just said, I don't eat most kinds of meat. Okay, so this is garbage, what we're getting right here. So um, she's giving some kind of, like, I don't know, like, communisty socialist kind of take where it's like look we like once we have like you know worker control of the means of production or whatever we like just <laughs> centrally plan all of this we'll just get rid of the meat production altogether she's basically saying something along the lines of this has to be done from the top down uh bottom up uh effort makes no difference now there's two things to be said about that so first of all bottom up effort does make a difference right if the millions of vegans who are not supporting the animal holocaust right now were supporting the animal holocaust that would result in significantly more animals being holocausted and then the second point is that even if you're not able to make a large impact on a problem via your personal behavior that doesn't mean that you don't have a moral responsibility to act in a certain way now a really analogy would be a really easy analogy would be to like rape or murder or something right so if you personally don't engage in rape or don't engage in murder you're not going to have much of an impact on the overall rape stats for the country or the globe or something like this right but you still have a personal moral obligation not to engage in those actions now my question would be if you would agree with that in the human context and say regardless of whether we can do something from the top down i have a personal obligation not to murder but you don't hold that position in the animal context what is true of animals that if true of humans would cause you to to switch your position there and say i don't have a moral obligation not to murder i think if you can't answer that question that is a big problem on your view so yeah this like garbage analysis of like until we do something from the top down like you just don't have an obligation not to rape or not to murder or not to eat the massacred corpses of holocaust victims uh, i'm gonna call bullshit so first of all you do have an impact even if it's small and cumulatively it can be a lot and you can make that kind of case against voting and stuff that seems kind of silly too right um but uh then secondly even if we say yeah your impact's really small does that relieve you of the moral responsibility to uh act in a certain way and i would say no but um, it's going to need to happen on the side of production rather than consumption in order to make a difference. That's just such garbage. It's like, so firstly, are you, are you claiming that the millions of vegans on the planet right now, if they were all eating meat, there wouldn't be any difference in how many animals are being holocausted? I mean, unless you're going to affirm that position, which is <laughs> just insane, right? Then you're going to have to grant that, yes, individuals are making a difference. 
Um, now, I agree that doing something from the top down would be great, and I really hope we can do that, and that might even be necessary to get all the way to the goal that we want to get to, but that doesn't alleviate your personal moral responsibility not to support the Holocaust. And I don't like to psychologize people, so I'm not, you know, this is just something that I think happens. I don't know if it's going on with her, but I think a lot of people take this kind of position where it's like, oh, the change has to come from the top down, not from me personally, because it's convenient for them and it lets them justify their lifestyle. So again, just two points in response to that. Please remember them both. First of all, you do make an impact. Secondly, even if your impact's small, that doesn't mean that you don't have a moral obligation not to engage in rape, murder, Holocaust support, etc. Yeah. So d d if I can respond to that, uh, you know, I, I very strongly disagree that uh, what we do, uh, you know, doesn't matter, you know, uh, that it doesn't make a difference. I think it makes all the difference. I mean, like, if we're not going to change our habits, if we're not going to do anything, then how are we going to solve the problem? Well, and, and you can just give her a counterexample and <laughs> ask her to deal with the counterexample. Just say, if all the vegans alive right now were eating animal products, do you think that that would not result in more animals being holocausted? I mean, if she says no to that, she's going to be, like, denying supply and demand, and that's going to that's gonna go into, like, insane territory, right? And if she says yes, then she grants the point. We're just going to wait for fish to go extinct. You know, like, we need to do something, and we need to do what we can. And, you know, speaking to somebody, you know, who I'm, I'm really happy to know that, you know, that you do things about this and that you, you were a vegan at one point. Uh, and I assume, you know, there's a point where, you know, you you look at this stuff, you see what really happens. It's not just the, the climate stuff. It's, it's an animal cruelty crisis, you know? And, like... We can just call it what it is. It's a holocaust. Just looking at, you know, looking at what happens to them and, you know, letting yourself feel remorse for that. And, you know, like, I, I let myself cry about it. You know, I feel remorse about it. It's a, it's a terrible thing that's happening to the to this whole planet you know what we do just as a species you know how we just this guy is coming from a very real personal place and i appreciate that use other species you know however we see fit you know being in that state of mind which i'm sure you've been in before i'm sure, I'm sure you've seen it before you know there must have been a time where you had that state of mind and you knew that saying that you know just saying oh what i do doesn't matter like those excuses that people make for not being vegan. This guy's just getting fucking real on them. Holy shit. Who is this caller? Come join the Discord. You know. That they're bullshit. You know, like... Yeah. Fucking tell them. He needs to take responsibility <laughs> for what we do. And yes. We're the cause of this. Each and every one of us. You know? I mean, I... Uh, I, I, I can only tell you that, that from the perspective of, like... Um, having spent um, a decent amount of time living in a rural area, that there's, you know... Rural people have trouble getting meat, though, please, or getting veg, though. Please don't uh, tell me that that's incoming. When you... Like, if so, I mean, again, just the fact that I can, like, predict it, assuming I get the prediction right, just says how standard of, like, kind of carnist bullshit points these are. There's, a, there's, a, there's another perspective that particularly people who, you know, farm have. And um, not necessarily like big farms, but you know, I had neighbors up there. They will, they'll buy two pigs, you know, in the you know early spring. Okay, I was wrong about the prediction. It's okay. Late spring, uh, and then they'll slaughter them in October, and that'll be the the food that they eat for this for the for the winter, uh, or they'll shoot a deer. Right, and if we, like, bought two, uh, you know, black slaves and slaughtered them and ate them, would that be okay? Of course, you're going to say no to that, so what's true of animals that, if true of humans, would cause you to say that that is an okay thing to do? And uh, that'll be the other meat that they have for the winter. Um, there, There's, you know, people, you live on a farm, you see animals go at it with each other, kill each other sometimes, um, and you just get a sense of, like, this is we're all just sort of living entities and we all end up back in the soil on some level <laughs> yeah i mean think of what that would justify though yeah sam you know you're gonna end up in the soil anyway so i think i'm going to you know just buy you and some other dude and just cut you up and eat you and get through the winter you'll be in the soil anyway yeah i mean does the fact that a creature will die anyway justify murdering them 
<laughs> it seems like an obvious no to me, but, you know, whatever. And it's just part of a cycle. Um, cycle of, of death. <laughs> just, just murder because people are going to die anyway. I mean, I think... The funny thing is, like, Sam, I, I mean... I don't know that, like, I don't agree with all his politics, but I know that he's a caring person, right? And in a context where his, um, his, like, where he's actually just not got any bias and he's just being totally, like, like, open and honest, like, he would never say this kind of just garbage, right? It's like, you know, okay, whatever. Well, the, differ the difference between us and animals is that, you know, we can think about this, we can, you know make the decisions and we can take responsibility for it and you know when animals kill each other you know i mean that is what they're supposed to do you know uh in nature that doesn't dictate you know what we're supposed to do what we're supp i don't think you should use the phrasing that they're supposed to do it right like you don't i mean what do you mean supposed to like that's like how they've evolved or something like this like you can say something like that if you want but you shouldn't try to morally justify the suffering in nature like you can say look we wouldn't hold animals individually responsible because they don't understand what they're doing but we should still acknowledge wild animal suffering as a serious moral problem it is a serious moral problem it's just one that we don't really know what to do about supposed to do is you know make good decisions well but i mean i mean, I mean listen, what, what I, I believe we're supposed to i'm do sympathetic is, with you your know. perspective but how do you know what we're supposed to do well here's the thing like well, I'm. Well, wait a sec. I just want. I'm just. I'm, I'm asking. I, I. I. I think everything you're saying in terms of the practical issues. I, I. I. Well, what we're supposed to do. I mean, how do you know what we're supposed to do? Like, what are you? Do you want to get into a conversation about meta ethics? Like, I mean, my account is just. I'm a moral subjectivist, and I have certain values. And one of the things I value is increasing well-being in the universe. And if I have a choice of either supporting a Holocaust or not, it's obvious that supporting it doesn't achieve that goal of maximizing well-being. So if I want to achieve that goal, then I should not support the Holocaust. It's like there's a pretty straightforward kind of utilitarian reason. Um, you could, you know, give other accounts of why we're supposed to do it. But I think that you know, a, a reasonable person who's, like, concerned with the suffering of other beings would agree that we are, you know, supposed to not support that. I agree with. But but how do you know what we're supposed to do as humans? Well, you know, that, that is an interesting question. Uh, I, th I think that we decide what we're supposed to do. Right. So I, I don't... I don't know in, like, a, in like a metaphysical sense. You know, I'm, I'm not, like, a religious person. But uh, so this guy's actually kind of sensitive to the meta ethics thing. Cause he said like like uh, metaphysical. So it's it's good. He's not gonna try like he's not gonna try to give some crazy like <laughs> like I don't know weird metaphysical objectivist account of why we ought do something. He's just saying we determine what we should do. And you know I guess the assumption there is that Sam has like decent values that don't support holocausts. I think that well I could take it from a. I could go at this instead of from a religious perspective, from a biological perspective. Uh, I think that if there is a God, he's telling us hardcore, you know, you guys need to stop eating meat. It's a public health crisis, too. I don't like that argument. If there is a God, he's telling us that. Like, first of all, why would I think there's a God? And secondly, why would I think he's telling us that? It's kind of, it's not a very good line of reasoning. You know, well, wait a second, but wait, wait, wait. I, I, what I thought he was saying initially was just, look, I'm not going to try to give some metaphysical account of why we ought to do something. I'm just saying, like, I have these values, and I think you do too, so let's act on them. That would be a fine thing to say. Don't get into this, if there was a god, he'd tell us to do X and Y. Wait, wait, look at the biology I just want to, I just, I just want to, about and don't, don't get into appealing to biology either. Or biology. Well, wait a second, but wait a second. That uh, requires us to eat meat. Right, but the fact that we're not biologically required doesn't mean that it's wrong to do. We, uh, you know, anatomically, we there's, don't have anything that even allows us to eat meat without using technology to cook it. There's, you know, we, we are physically no, I herbivores. Understand. I understand. There are plenty. I think that's questionable. And I think even if it's not the case that biologically we fall in the classification of herbivores, who cares? If we don't need to eat it, we can still make the same moral arguments. The animals that vegans are way too attached to humans have to be herbivores it's like who the fuck cares it doesn't matter for herbivores or omnivores if we can eat plants we can make the same kind of moral arguments it doesn't really even matter that much it's just like this random peripheral like 
biology debate that people get sidetracked into. I can eat meat and also uh, non-meat. Um, and but I guess my point is, from a practical standpoint and, and from everything you're saying, but in terms of like what we're supposed to do, we don't know. And so I, my, my only thing I would... What do you mean what we're supposed to do, we don't know? Like, are you saying we don't have some like metaphysical like account of like, like, are, are you saying we can't, we can't get some like deep moral principle from the universe itself? Like we don't, we can't decipher from like the code of the universe what we're supposed to do. Like presumably what we're supposed to do is just going to be like those, like act on those things that we value, right? And if like not causing a holocaust is something that we value, then, you know, <laughs> it's supposed to, I, I just take that to mean like we, uh, we have like a hypothetical norm to like act on that by not supporting the holocaust. Hypothetical norm is just you have a goal, this action would actualize the goal and supposed to just means this is the action that would actualize the goal. But it's not like we have to give some like crazy metaphysical account of the goal like why would why would that be the case do you have to do that when you make your progressive points in fact it would be interesting to know what moral foundation sam's progressivism sorry i'll mute that uh comes from like is he like is this all consequential like he thinks progressive policies will maximize well-being or is it from like a rights perspective where even if those policies don't maximize well-being they like properly preserve rights it would be interesting to explore his normative ethics but like bottom line like I mean, I don't think that Sam is going to give some, like, complicated metaphysical account of, like, why you ought have the values that lead to, like, progressivism. And I don't see why he's making a vegan do that. We can just be subjectivists and just say, like, look, these are the kind of values that we want to act on. And I think he agrees that the kind of values that are, like, against causing a holocaust, against causing, like, you know, a really disproportionate amount of suffering for a small amount of well-being are, you know, bad things. I would just assume he holds those values. We don't need to talk about how those values are grounded out if we both agree we hold them we can just see what follows from them say to you is that i think like you know for on a practical level i think i think uh jamie's point i think is well taken that you know our individual habits are not going to what's going to you know sort of uh, uh, necessarily be the change but well they certainly make a change and like you could even grant like i don't necessarily grant this i don't know this is true um, you could you could grant that we're gonna need some level of top-down action now if you if you're the kind of person who's optimistic enough to think like a very very large amount of people will go vegan you know then maybe we don't need some kind of like top-down action but like I'm inclined to think you know top-down action would be good it would speed things along and I'm all for it it just doesn't alleviate the individual moral responsibility not to contribute to the Holocaust what's wrong with that take like if you watch this please just actually think about this Sam we can all grant that it would be good to do something about the animal Holocaust from the top down but how does that mean that the individual doesn't have a personal obligation not to support the Holocaust, right? They still make some level of impact, and you still think in other contexts, like rape and murder, even if I personally can't have a big impact on the global rape or murder stat by not raping or murdering, that I still have a moral obligation not to do those things. And a further question, if you agree you have that obligation in the human context, what's true of the animal that, if true of the human, would cause you not to have that obligation? Important questions. But... Our individual habits certainly inform our politics and certainly inform the politics of other people and we can bring about sort of a societal change on on, on big questions like this in terms of like our agriculture and our our uh, you know the way that we deal with these things i i would just say that like um i don't totally know what he means there like is he's just saying the change might not come totally from individuals but we can still have an individual impact like if that's what you're saying then then good but i would go beyond just saying an individual impact i'd say we have an individual obligation i mean look you have an individual obligation not to murder a human regardless of whether you can stop murder across the globe by you personally not murdering what is it about animals that means that you don't have that same obligation there? Is it that they're less intelligent? Well, that's going to mean you don't have the obligation when it comes to disabled people, right? What difference could account for not having that obligation in the animal context? I think it's a trickier sell, frankly, and I don't think it's, um, uh, I think it's a trickier sell to say about like, you know, what, what we are or are not supposed to do. What part of us are simply animals and what part of us have the ability to rise above uh, our animal instincts? Um, but 
Yeah, the moral okay. appeal is not going to be... Well, wait, so what we're supposed to do... The thing that's weird to me about that is just that we haven't clarified what supposed to means there. Is it some, like, metaphysical thing? Whatever. That's the weirdness. I don't have a problem with the language of supposed to. I just think we should be clear about what we mean. Now let's hear her problem with the moral case. ...effective for the greatest number of people. Like... Yeah, that's possible that the moral case won't be effective for the greatest number of people. And, you know, you can, if you want to be as effective as possible, you might want to make other cases too. I'm totally fine with that. But I still don't see how that gets you out of the moral case. Like, look, if someone makes the moral case to you, just saying, hey, like the moral case, that's not going to be the most effective way to persuade everyone. It's like, okay, cool. Like, sure, let's just grant that. But what's your reply to the moral case? Do you have one? Like, I share the goal of wanting people to eat less meat. Um, may for the animals, for health, for the planet. Um, I think the most effective... Why, why not want them to eat no meat, right? Is what you want for the animal holocaust to stop or to be reduced? I want it to stop. I think it's not justified. And same kind of question, right? If it's a human holocaust, you would say it's important that we end it, not that we just reduce it, right? So again, what difference is there between humans and animals that accounts for that difference in terms of end goal with respect to a holocaust of either being apparently if it's animals the end goal is reduce the holocaust if it's humans the end goal is end the holocaust the way to do that and the most effective arguments for most people will be that we need to have a habitable planet okay cool story but what is your reply to the moral argument because when it comes down to morality uh, it's entirely subjective Unless yeah, we can agree morality is subjective. <laughs> I mean, who who cares if morality is subjective? We want to understand what your subjective moral view says about animals. So here's a question that I ask you as one subjectivist to another, okay? You think that it is wrong to murder humans, okay? Apparently, in the case of animals, it's what? It's justifiable on some level? So what is it that's true of animals that, if true of humans, would cause you to say, yeah, you know, it's fine, it's fine to just murder us? I want to know the answer to that, right? That's a question that you have to answer just as much as a subjectivist as, uh, as you would if you're an objectivist. It's not a case that relies on subjectivism or objectivism. We're just looking at your own values and seeing if you're being consistent about them. Now, if you want to generate a consistent anti-vegan position, you're perfectly able to do that. You can take a position like, for example, I don't value beings below a certain level of intelligence, right? And then that's going to justify murdering animals. It's fine for us to holocaust animals, but then you get the consequence of it's okay to holocaust disabled people, right? Which I assume you don't want. So I just want to understand what kind of basis there would be for supporting the one holocaust but not the other. Unless there's like you know everybody believes in the same moral system everybody believes in the same like platonic ideals somewhere in the sky like it's very hard to prove that something is immoral when it comes to something that has so little agreement like why why do people do this weird like red herring to moral objectivism like unless morality is objective and you can just say this is the objective moral truth then we can't tell you what you should do well, no, like, what you should do is just relative to your own values. Like, if you have a value that has a certain logical conclusion and you're not acting on it, well, according to your value system, you should be doing it and you're not doing it. That could just be what should means, right? Animal rights. Um, well, I, I think that, I, th I think it's just really important, just on, on the subject of, you know, environmentalism, is, because this is also, this is the number one cause of species extinction, you know, uh, we're using more land for it than, than we are for almost anything else. Uh, and I, I just think that, like, you know, we're living in a mass extinction right now. And, you know, if we don't as a species, and, and I mean, you know, I'm not necessarily, uh, you know, I don't know how successful I'm going to be. I haven't practiced this. You know, I don't know how successful I'm going to be in changing people's minds. But, you know, uh, it's important that... Uh, that we as a species, if we're going to have an environmental movement, that people stop, uh, you know, start to see all life on this earth as being valuable. People kind of start to realize that, you know, we're all, you know, uh, we're all on this planet together. I mean, look, we have a problem. If we don't treat each other with respect, we're going to no, kill ourselves. I agree. Know? But, I mean, I have to remind you that... 17 years ago, 15 years ago, we were killing tens of thousands of people. Ultimately, we killed yeah. hundreds of thousands of people. And if you walked around, I was a fully grown adult at this time, you walked around and asked people about it, nobody 
Nobody, nobody gave it a second thought. Nobody gave it a second thought. I mean, so there are limitations uh, on a human's ability to give a crap about other people. And that is a, um, a, a reality. And Sure, we can agree with that. But is that your personal excuse that you're just limited in your ability to give a crap? Right? What, like, what is, what is your personal excuse? It's, it's also, it's, it's going to make it that much harder for them to give a crap about animals, um, which is why I say that in terms of achieving your ends, if they are strictly to um, save as many animal lives as possible, that making it about morality is probably the hardest route to go to get to that end, frankly. But. Now, I don't know if that's true. We don't really know how receptive people are to the different arguments. And I think a lot of people who are vegan are vegan for moral reasons. So I'm not going to just buy into uh, the moral argument isn't the most effective way to promote veganism. I'm not sure if that's true. But even if that is true, sure, that just means we should use other tactics also. And that doesn't mean that you have any reply to the moral argument. And just saying, I don't care, right? If that was the reply to the kind of question I asked you about what differentiates, like, you know, the, <laughs> the Holocaust of animals from the Holocaust of humans, are you saying it would be fine to support it if you just personally say, oh, I just don't give a shit? Right? I don't think so. All right. We're out of time. Interesting stuff, okay. though. I appreciate the call. Thank you. All right, okay. So... Overall, I guess this is what I'll say. Um, it seems like Sam is on some level open to veganism. He doesn't seem to deny why it's important, but he is definitely uh, not fully letting himself see the moral case. He's kind of got blinders on. And I think that, um, you know, some someone just has to get in there, and yes, I'll try calling, and really push him on the moral argument. Um, and I think that when he realizes, like, just how... Um, how difficult the moral argument is to respond to. Um, I think that, and he kind of does some more examination of his values, I think that he could be brought around to going vegan. Um, okay, so that is all for today. Um, support on Patreon, merch down below. Till next time.